people think Vildosola, but it's, it's, uh, it's Vildosola. Vildos, like two Ola. Vildosola. Vildosola. Yeah. I feel like the more I think about it, the more I'll fuck it up. Yeah, when you see your That's like my life. one of the cars, that makes it, because it says V-I-L, then it's two, and then O-L-A, Vildosola, two yeah, in Spanish. Vildosola. That gets the accent. Hell yeah. special day. Uh, we're gonna start a series called the Legends Series. Um, that's gonna showcase people that I grew up um, inspired by and, and dudes that uh, just kind of through the off-road industry um, made a imprint and a, a mark and we're at Vildosola. 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 There, see he does it better. Vildosola. This is Dave Clark. Uh, we're not related, we do have the same last name, but Although that's it. I don't it. have an E. Yeah, oh, and you remembered that I have an E. <laughs> when we got off the boat, we dropped the E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> so um, Dave Clark's a, a huge part of off-road and um, just kind of fabrication in general. Uh, and the way he builds things is, I wouldn't say it's typical. I, I think that you have a style and a way, of, a functional way of building things that's different than other people's stuff. I learned from a good person, so I kind of... Exactly. A lot of times people a big, a big compliment to me is when somebody thinks Nye built it. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. So that's the thing is I wanna like, with Dave's the first of, of what we're doing here with this series and I wanna just get his, your story and where you started and how you got into off-road and then, and then we'll, we have one of your pre-runners here that we'll talk about um, and we'll get into that too. But there's also a couple more that he's built that were, that left an imprint on me as far as when I grew up and, well, I don't know if I grew up, but you know what I'm saying, when I was younger less old <laughs> um, we're so when you started wh how did you get into off-road fabrication how did that work I had what started for me is uh, my second car I am um, I ended up buying a blown-up Volkswagen for yeah. four hundred dollars and yeah. had to rebuild the motor yeah so first thing I did is I got the idiots guide how to how to rebuild your yeah. Volkswagen which that's a famous book yeah and then I got the how to hot rod your Volkswagen, the HP. Yeah, Volkswagen. that's a good combo. So yeah, that was good stuff. <laughs> and then from there I met guys that grew up in Riverside, so there was a street, Alamo Street. Mm -hmm. uh, all the off-roaders were down that street. You know, uh, uh, Henry Harris, um, the old the old yellow Bronco yeah. plaques yeah. used to be out there. Yeah. Um, Fumio Fukai, Daryl Fatone, the, the people that started Impy, sure. they were out there. Yeah. And also the Impy, the original yeah. company was yeah. Riverside. Yeah. So I ended up getting hooked up with a engine place, Fumio Fukaya. So I ended up, he, he would have me clean, mm -hmm. sweep the floor, anything. Just the basics, the yeah, yeah. So I think I worked there for like nine months. It's cleaned up. Um, after school, I would go over there. Sure. And then um, one day he said, hey, you want to work here full time? Anyway, so we did cylinder heads, engines. Yeah. So I worked there for like 10 years. Yeah. And then from there I- How old were you then? Like 18, 18. 17. Copy that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then I met a, t the person who came to my life was Nye Frank. Yeah. I met Nye Frank and Danny Thompson because they were sponsored by um, somebody that wanted Fumio to do the motors. Sure. So we were doing cylinder heads and motors. And yeah, yeah. One day Nye goes, hey, Dave, you want to come to a race? And yeah. like, I can go to a race? And after that, I was all hooked. Do you remember the race? Yeah, it was a, it was a short course race in, in Phoenix. Okay, copy. And it wasn't, you know, this is like about the time when, before Mickey Thompson really started. Mm -hmm. I think they had the first Coliseum race, you know, the night race mm -hmm, they did. Mm -hmm. And this was in that time period. Awesome. Yeah. I think there might have been a Mickey Thompson Pomona race at the other, wow. at the one place. And then yeah. we did, a, like I said, the short course race in um, Phoenix. Yeah, do you know any circle on the year of that? Uh, probably 77, maybe 78. Copy. Maybe. Yeah. Probably something like that. It's a long time. And then Saddleback, you know, yeah. just go to Saddleback. Yeah. Sick. So you went to your first race? Yeah, went to the first race, and that was it. And um, the guy, Nye Frank, he was um, just a legend. He yeah. did everything, did land speed, drag racing, all those things. Yeah. And really analytical guy, and really easy to get along with. So he ended up, he totally took me under his wing, and we just did work. Uh, built cars, yeah, traveled yeah, the world, yeah. um, spearfish, scuba dived, yeah, you know, all those yeah. kind of things. Why do you think that you guys um, vibe together? Why do you think you 
why did he take you? You know, something we we always got along. Mm -hmm. We really really hit it off. He was a, yeah. he was a good guy, hard worker. But Just, you know, when you're a kid, you're you're working all the time. And, yeah. And racing, it was a very worthwhile goal. For sure. So For sure. Um, he was very meticulous fabricator, but analytical mind. So it was always, you know, we try and reason things out. Um, you know, and back then you had to do a lot of stuff yourself. There wasn't, you didn't go to this power steering person and call this guy. You were like, you were having yeah. to fix the problem yourself. And yep. if there was a problem with, you know, power steering or a certain one gear, the transmission, you're doing that yourself. Yeah, you know, absolutely. In-house so, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So over the years, he all, with the different programs, he would always have me like on special teams. Mm. So if there was something that was breaking or, or something like that, sure, sure. he would stick me on it. And yeah. We would work together. You're the problem solver. Well, I've tried. I've tried. <laughs> For the most part. <laughs> um, what, what do you think the most memorable vehicle you worked on or constructed was? The first one you kind of remember that, that you know, they left all, a mark. Actually, they all work at the Mickey Thompson days. You know, we ended up building a few uh, vehicles there, yeah. But one of them was the the Mazda show course, and mm -hmm. they, they were you know little, you know rotary dual dual rotor Mazda 13 Bs. Yeah, yeah. Really, you get some good power out of them, but they're like it's little solid ingots of iron. Yeah. Um, they had a funny power band, so they were all pipey, not not much. Torque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they were they were interesting cars, and you know we had to dry sump the carburetor. Sure. You know, so uh, Weber 48s bore them out to 51 and dry sump yeah. them, so yeah. they would ended up performing pretty good yeah but actually all the vehicles I, I find that I always think oh when might I get a chance to build another new thing and then sure. a new thing comes along it's it, like a manifest thing you think about it enough and it comes yeah 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 I mean I enjoyed the pre-runner I, I enjoyed the trophy tracks I, yeah building anything and that was going to be another question too is do you enjoy a pre like a building a pre-runner a sealed cab pre-runner more than like a race truck well they're definitely harder yeah no, I feel like they're the that. pinnacle because you had to figure out a lot more stuff yeah yeah you know? air conditioning and, and doors at work and in windows and all that and then with the windows you have to have defrosters and wipers and all yeah, that yeah but a race car is more you know functional more like blinders on you see, see sure head. sure this has a lot of other things that you have to deal with license plates and turn <laughs> etc <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, for myself, so there was Taylor Motorsports. Um, and when I, high school era, I was, um, I had a buddy that lived, his parents lived in Banning. And I don't know where Taylor Motorsports was originally. Were they up? He's in Hemet, San Ysidro, Hemet. So that yeah. area. He's in the same place. And I remember like the 9703, there was that extra cab truck they built. And that was where like the trailer products made the front clip and the bedsides. And those are kind of like, memorable bedsides now and stuff like the flat top and those proportions and i feel like that pre-runner that extra cab that you built was like one of the landmark you know pre-runners of that time there was like i think craig made one too he built one around that time you know that was extra cab yeah yeah yes. but yours was the one that left a stink because i went out and i would see that thing cruising all the time it you know like be a little remember it had curves to it it wasn't yeah. square or box yeah it was, a, it was gorgeous it had really sleek lines it was low and wide and it just it was pretty and it kind of felt compact too you know it was almost like a short and wheelbase situation yeah yeah um when do you do you remember anything with that build like do you yeah do you have any highlights you want to talk about i'd love to talk about that thing you know something uh, it was a regular deal we approach you know we approach it um We'll make, like for the for front suspension, for instance, yeah. before that car was built by hand, not yeah, like yeah. a computer-aided design or anything. And sure. I couldn't just push a button and 3D print it. Yeah, yeah. But, um, so we lay out the geometry with models. I learned from Nye the string computer thing. I think it's one of the Carol Smith books. Yeah. But you could build a, a 2D model of like your upright, your A-arms, you know, to length and all that. And, and um, it's full scale. And then you're looking at it in the third view. Well, by doing that, you can figure out your roll centers, your camber curves, you know, with string, you know, you'll, you'll put this plate on the ground, put the wheel where you want it, run straight a string, extending the A-arms to a point. Yeah. And then at that point, you extend it to the other side of the car, like yeah. where the tire is, yeah. or where it crosses the center line of the car. 
and you could figure out your camber curves and things like yeah. that using this very basic tool. Sure. Well, nowadays we do everything on a computer, mm -hmm. but, but I have checked it back to back, and it, so at least I do know the computers are accurate. Checks out, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So we would um, come up with the dimensions we want in that in the front view, and then now you're starting to make make pieces. You mm -hmm. know, we'll, you make the spindle, we'll know, you know, what scrub radius we sure. want or whatever. Make it hold it in space, and pretty soon we're putting these parts on the frame jig in space. Mm -hmm and then then connecting with tubes yeah. obviously i'm always trying to make sure you can work on it you know if there's an area that's tough you need to have a standard snap-on wrench in your hand and be able to get to the bolt if it doesn't then you need to you need to try and make it easier and that's on. that's the thing too like i've i have like a design background over a mechanical background so I get involved and then i'm like oh man shoot that's gonna be tricky you know like and i have to reel stuff back from design to get the functionality right. Yeah, yeah. And when, you, you know, we'll talk about this thing because it's, we have a live demonstration of that stuff here. But, you know, even with that, the simplicity of things, you know, just landing all the tubes where they need to land and then, and then just kind of having things tidy. And it's very open. Even when you look at it, you can see like things are right there and easy. Um, and I remember, you know, the same with the Taylor truck, you know, very similar. Oh. Yeah, try and make it easy to work on because some normally when it is being worked on, somebody's tired, they're hungry, they're in the middle of the desert, they're dirty, mm -hmm. not the best connections, poor light, and yeah. they're working on it. Yeah. So at least needs to have a chance of working on it. Sure, sure. You know, there's areas of a car that get tough, you know, like the dry sump area mm -hmm. where the belt is. You know, the areas that are tough and hard to get into. There's no reason the whole car has to be that way. You know, don't, yeah. don't make a place hard to get to in the beginning. Sure, you know, do, sure. So. Absolutely. And then what was what were you telling me about the ATC in the back of that thing? Oh, well, and Kyle's truck truck, what we did, it had, um, I don't remember the details, but we had some uh, boxes, toolboxes, and then a single spare tire. Yeah. We did the aluminum that you could take the tire out and it all looked nice. Yeah. But also I put some anchor hold down where my Honda 350X three-wheeler could go in the back, <laughs> we could tie it down, and you could jump with my three-wheeler yeah. in the back. Yeah. And I thought that was important, was to be able to, oh, yeah. at least you're out cruising, something sure. happens, you go out, you get the guy's bike, throw in the back of your pre-runner, and, sure. and then take it back to camp. Absolutely, so absolutely. That, that, that was important. Yep, and then there, they had a trophy truck, right? Yes. Was that a mezzanine truck? Yeah, that was a mezzanine in the back. It I, had to dive in the front also. Yeah, and we'll cover that because that's a huge thing for you. That's that's kind of how I know with like the trophy truck too, that one, and that one's beautiful too. But that that dive is always like, that's like the Dave Clark special to me. I'm just pointing for <laughs> pointing. But um, the uh, me, what what are your thoughts on mezzanine? Like, what, you know? Well, I, I did that because I, wa I wanted to, but also <laughs> it, it, made the, it made the four links in yeah. the rear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. The chocks and springs don't really care where they're at, so they don't have to be here. Yep. Well, by putting a, I built a rocker arm here, that way those could just be straight tubes, so they were like a lot sure. little better ground clearance, all those kind of things. Yep, yep. Also, one thing the mezzanine does is it spring base. It makes the spring base of the car be greater. Yep. If you think about that, if uh, the car has four springs on it, okay, you push the car up and down, it's X to push it up and yep. down. Well, if the springs are all on the tires and going straight up, you push it up and down, okay, and the thing's stable. If you take the springs and lean them towards the middle of the car, sure, it goes up and down the same, but the car is really mm. rolly. Well, by, uh, by m moving the springs from like here to here, it kind of adds stability. And that, that's that. part sure. of why we did it. Yeah, yeah. And um, it makes the car kind of more, it takes way less sway bar. Yeah, it tracks springs, a little better in the back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it makes the car stable with a smaller bar. I've always thought too for like, I mean, talking pre-runner stuff like an SUV would be nice because you get your rear seat stuff and you don't have that shock stuff going on. Yes. And then you also have weight in the rear, you know, because yes, yes. you can run a fuel cell that's almost like this, like a, you know, more of a elongated rectangle in the middle and then your shock packaging can go on the sides. Yeah, and yes, yes. It's kind of a good hey, program. Noisy things away from the cab. Yeah, yeah, that's what we talked about earlier. It's like, it's like it's just you know the shocks are so fucking loud. They're just yeah, like you they're know. They're as loud as the Yeah, yeah. And they're loud as the exhaust almost. Yeah, and I think people just grow accustomed to that. But it's it's almost like it's a luxury that's been taken away that you just deal with now. You know, because I don't know, it's just there. Um, you want to talk about this thing? Um, 
Well, yeah, yeah, this is a... So, look, from, for, on my end of this thing, I saw it, sorry to interrupt you, but just to start it, I saw this at the Off-Road Expo years ago, uh, when it was fresh, um, and I remember the carbon doors, like, like that. It just feels, it feels a little heavier now than it did at the Off-Road Expo. <laughs> there might be stuff in there, but um, these are all carbon. Yeah, yeah, complete. We had to make molds front. There's internal stuff too. I think it's three molds for each door. Yeah. In the internal stuff. Yeah. Now, w when you first construct this, is like a 04 or something, right? 04 cab, something, something similar to that. Like that. Yeah, the classic extra cab F150, the newer one. Uh, what were your original intentions with this thing? Did you know? What well, were the goals? Well, Gus uh, wanted it light. Mm -hmm. So it, basically, the whole time thinking about how light. So. W that's in fact, that's why we kept a lot of the stock sheet metal cab. Sure. And I ground a lot of spot welds to get rid of the double, the double mm -hmm. places the and, layers. Place and mm -hmm. get some, get some weight out of it. But also the cab's like 35 thousandths with a lot of shape. Mm -hmm. well, whatever you keep, we can't replace it with 35 thousandths. Yeah. You know, it would be 16th and, and yeah. not yeah. as, mm -hmm. not as rigid. So we tried keeping as much of the original floor as we could just because it was lighter. That's awesome. So that was basically it. Um, this, this rear layout mm -hmm. kind of came up with it because it took less linear feet of tube. So when it was, when we're trying to make something lighter, yeah, you yeah, use absolutely. less of it. And, and then we said, we said we would chase cracks. We'd try and build a light and yeah. we would add ounces of little gussets. Sure. As opposed to just making it heavy to begin with. Yeah. And so we learned, you know, a few things. Adding ounces, like I said, little patches. And then in the end, you at least have a lighter piece. Absolutely. What is the uh, powertrain in this thing? It's a it's a, a Ford small block yeah. with a turbo 400. Kind of a patent motor. What's that? Is it a patent motor? Who makes the motor? It might be a du it might have Dugans. Dugans. Right okay. Now. Yeah. Patent for a long time. Okay. Turbo there we go. Yeah. Has a Rancho drivetrain. Yeah. Uh, underdrive on it. Yeah. Yeah. This thing's seen a lot of miles. Well, we tried being really clean. Gus wanted to see the firewall right up to the window. Yeah. Well. We wanted to have one GPS now. Later, one another one gets added, so there's yeah. here. But we wanted one GPS. I was adamant on being able to have it move. Yes. That way, you get closer to you when you're. It's one of my markers. favorite things. Yeah. And so you can move it here, but then you can go. Oh, see, it is marked. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you can aim it to the person. Sure. And that's part of all of this was getting this to pivot and still aim it at the driver yeah. and have it clear. Yeah. So that kind of dictated all the. The shape of this inner console, which we have, that's stuck <laughs> with everything. Yeah, Dave said that all. So there's a there's a trunk mount AC in there, right? Yeah, that yeah. does the defrost, and then it does just the two these AC events. These. Yeah, yeah. And then these guys too, right? Yeah, yeah. And then all the electronics. So that is like one just of stuff right there. And there's a filter. Both both air ACs have factory filters oh, that's on nice. them. Yeah. So now if it's dust does get in, and you're running the air pretty sure. quickly it cycles out and it sure. cleans up sure. inside so we made sure we had filters for the interior yeah. air but yeah no, i really was pleased with the, this, the pivoting and the, it was the right look for an off-road well i think what you have here is you have a very like aircrafty mechanical vibe where it's raw systems you have like a nice little element of carbon to tie stuff in you know and then this like that is so cool to me. Like, and, and the, you know that's always the thing even I, and I haven't done a lot of like co-riding but when i have if you're at speed going through shit, having your hands reaching out, like your leverage on your hands, yeah, yeah. and having that where you can grab it and kind exactly. of, you know, brace yourself and hold that, that's so dialed. Yeah, you can just grab it. And also, a lot of people said, oh, it's going to shake and rattle off. You know, some it doesn't even do anything. It's yeah. like a tree, a branch tree, it's just swaying in the wind, yeah. not even a problem. Yeah, it's yeah. never cracked or anything. Yeah. Defrost, needing to have defrost yeah, for the windshield. Defrost, and I didn't want the, the hoses like under that that um dash area sure. where, like when you're trying to work on the car they're like in your way yeah so we hid the hose we hid the defrost hoses right in plain, plain sight, sight. yeah and made little ducks out of them yeah, and you get a design out of that you get some yeah. symmetry out of that thing yeah it looks so. swoopy from inside totally and you know it's just just how this this works you know like just like how it's so um just functional like it's just a functional pre-runner it's not bougie upholstery and this and that it is like bread and butter your meat and potato i guess but just it is exactly what you need and that's it you, you know watch it with power washer. <laughs> yeah yeah you <laughs> could it would be cooler probably because we had to really insulate it on the other side mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. for the heat of everything sure so having some interior would help definitely help the interior temperatures yeah and then you have all your carbon inset in here too huh y yes yeah little pieces yep. wanted 
Gus wanted to see the tubes. He didn't want to cover it. I'm a believer so in that I too. To see the construction. Yeah, it's the same when I've seen like you know trucks with headliners, and some of them they just put straight all the way across, and I'm like you don't even know there's cage work under there. Yeah, like yeah. why do that? Like it leaves some indentation or something. So. Yeah, we did try tucking like this A pillar bar. We tucked it. That's up tight. Here is that way you don't lose as much uh, visibility mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. there on the A pillar. Sure, sure. Spare drive shaft, jack handle inside. Rebar. Yeah, for marking the pit. Copy that. <laughs> <laughs> so when they see a spot where they want to, when we do logistics, part of pre-running is figuring out the logistics and sure. figuring out where sure. you're gonna be or where you want to pit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so one of the things with Dave, and I've always like call it like a, when you see it, it's a Dave Clark style front end where it's that, it's the dive. Uh, do you want to go into that kind of yeah, talking sure. about that? I'd love to hear your, your true theory on that. Here, I'm going to trade with you. You it's can come over there. Previous, okay, this is the same degrees that we've had previously, previously uh, like on Tavo's pre-runner. Yeah. But I will say it had a bit of a ground clearance problem because imagine if there's structure under here. Sure. You can see that it, there's a big thing that tends to be up, hit the ground. So yeah. with this design, we ended up going above this pivot point. Mm -hmm. That way, um, I mean, that's a spot that hit the ground, but at least it has like four or five more inches of ground clearance. Sure. Um, I've learned from Nye, and we always build stuff, dive into our stuff. Mm -hmm. The reasoning being, well, Remember stock Volkswagens, link pen. Yeah. You could run over a curb and they did pretty good. Yeah, because they you know, come back. They're pure trailing, it goes yeah. back. Now, yeah. later when you, you put like a trophy truck style on a one car, it actually doesn't do that as good because they got rid of the dive. Yeah. Well, when you have dive, you can run right over a square edge something and the wheel yeah. recedes away from it. Yeah. And do you think that, I mean, because when I think about it too, like just, you know, at speed or something and just the the mechanics of it you know it's able to absorb at yes, a better yes. rate than something where it's like perpendicular or something you know when your tire is perpendicular to ground you think oh, great fine well when you go into the face of a bump or land nose down the wheels actually going forward into the yep. bump. there's a some amount of force is going into the pivot points mm -hmm. not into the shock and spring you really want when you hit an obstacle the tire to move and then those forces go into the the spring to store it and the shock to dissipate it, change yep. it in the heat. Yep. Well, when it's um, 90 degrees or you're landing like this, the pivot points are seeing a load. You're like trying to rip the suspension off. Sure. Well, if you build trail into the thing, the wheel goes away from the scene of the crime and then that energy goes into the spring and shock. Perfect. Kind of where it's meant to be. Now, it means you have to do your tuning, tune your, your damping in your spring a little bit different to take into account the the trail that has that got and dive that got added what's your opinion on the running the shocks like that too where you have like a you know your bypass is outboard right and your coilovers yes. inboard instead of the perpendicular way it was to make it lighter it's to make the shock and spring both um take more some amount of structure to support sure well on this kind of an a-arm it's uh, one leg holds the damping and you want to look at that joe it's only one thing that has to do that load. Yeah. The front leg, that's an inch and three quarter, 120 wall. It's just I supporting. Mean, that's it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's supporting the thing here. It has a lot of miles, but it was basically to make a light structure. Sure. Now, it is a bit of a balancing act. You know, you move the bypass shock out as far as you can, and then you put the spring up against it. It tends to make it hard to get enough spring. So you really need to. It takes a heavier spring than if it was mounted more in the middle or, or, sure. or 0.65. This is more, this, this shock is 0.75. So on each inch of wheel travel, the shock's moving three quarters mm -hmm. of an inch mm -hmm. as opposed to a half inch or a. Sure, yeah, so, the ratio. Anyway, it, it is a packaging deal, but I, I definitely make it so you can get stock springs. You don't have to make special springs to pull yeah. it off. Yeah, yeah, and you can even see kind of just like 
you have inner cavities there where your dry sump tank is and all the packaging. The thing is just, it's, it's very simple. You know, it's not like too overly built. And, and with that overly built thing, it, you render problems for serviceability. You know, you we know. try to make it be easy. You know, we put, we put um, dipsticks on all the things, power steering, this is transmission, yep. dry sump. So at least instead of having to get going through the top on the tank, we pull a panel off right here and we can do all the oils here and there's little dipsticks attached mm -hmm. to everything. When we check, you know, we're checking the motor all the time. Well, that's our scavenge filter. Mm -hmm. So all the stuff that comes out of the motor, we can real quickly pull this apart. We don't even lose any oil because the oil level's here. Yeah. We can pull this off, only the top, pull the top out, yeah. verify that it's good, put it yeah. right back together yeah. quickly. Now, all that, that all comes from just your pedigree, right? With with experience well, and time, again, right? Because I'm used to campaigning. Like, when, I'm used to when you build something, you ran it for several seasons you know, try to go for a championship, those kind of things. So I'm all about having to work on it. Yeah, yeah. You know, when, it was, when somebody just builds cars and they go down the road, all the all the T's aren't crossed and dot, uh, the I's aren't dotted. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if you have a chance to, you know, devote, devote some time, you can make it easier to work on. For sure, yeah, absolutely. It might look buried in there, but the motor's actually not that bad. Yeah, now, yeah. Pull the, pull the window out and this whole, center piece comes mm -hmm. out and you can really get to everything yeah i like that the wipers are still retrofitted in there too <laughs> yeah. you know that was a bit of a i think that's one of those big hurdles but it pays dividends you know out in the elements for sure yeah, but, we, we can't see it now when we did the body work on this instead of trying to get this factory visor piece here that's always hard to get to made up with the fiberglass mm -hmm. what we did is we got rid of that and made the fiberglass cover the Oh wow! Yeah, so they, like a shroud. So we have other things that seal it for for like mud and water. Yeah. And that, but at least we're not trying to a body line, a yeah. fiberglass body line to a factory. Sure, factory. sure. Yeah. And, and those things fade and get shitty and crack yeah, and. They're always a pain. The other thing I noticed too, I think I don't know if this was the one. Did this have a different material for some of the lining in here? It wasn't just like aluminum. Did you did no. you use a different like medium like a like a poly or something or? No. Uh, oh, on our some of our A arms, there'll, there'll be a piece of plexiglass on the Copy arms that. or something, mm -hmm. just to keep you know either airflow or sand from going. Through. Sure. Yeah. Sure. This radiator ended up being wider than the typical core, mm -hmm. and so what we did we put two radiators together, and then we covered the split. But this is a window wiper. Yeah, tank. the wiper fluid. So it was kind of free because it's there's that much gap where the tanks go together. Yeah, so yeah. We put the window washer thing. Yeah, right I love there. that. To try to use this existing space sure you know, and have it also have a blend in with with the like no insulation on the interior portions of the of the cab what do you put on the back side you know, so that's a i actually don't know all the details but this is a couple different layers mm -hmm. mat in places, mm -hmm. and then like a got an aircraft insulation and yep. then this yellow stuff gets put on the fire right there puts it on yeah yeah <laughs> so it's time consuming he, sure they do the whole bottom of the car that way yeah absolutely did you do all the exhaust on there too? No, we had Homan. I think we called Homan on that. Okay, He's copy that. He's always good to deal with. Yeah, yeah. He's a good guy. Right on. Yeah, just the layout back here, it's crazy because that, that is, that's your, your fuel cell is the structure. And then all the substructure that's off of it is just like you said, that's just panel work and yeah. holding spares. And that's all the structure they need because right. it's just a spare tire. It doesn't need to, it yeah. doesn't need 120 out. It just yep. needs to hold the back of the yep. bedside. Same, the bump stop's interesting too. That's kind of just out there, you know, because that yeah. thing tapers so hard into there. Yeah, and we've never bent it. Yeah. Know? Obviously we do the regular deal where you try to have the bare minimum damping in the rear mm -hmm. and then catch it with the bump stop. Sure. Uh, oh, there it is, okay. It's right in front of me. I was gonna say, where's the sway bar, but it's hanging out there. Yeah, it's a pretty light bar. Yeah. So it's... Inch and a, inch and a quarter or something? I think that's an inch. Yeah, it looks like an inch. That might be yeah, an inch. it's an inch. Mm -hmm. Still not not too not too much. Yeah, yeah. It seems like a guys run big stuff now, like big inch and a half. You know. But yeah, it depends on where it's been. This is mounted right on the rear end, but yeah. You know, if you mount it up on on this arm a little bit, you start losing a lot. Sure. It's a beautiful car. Do you have plans to build another one? Uh, there's talk we might build one. So yeah, we'll see. Cool, cool. Right now we're busy with Tavo's all-wheel drive. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of uh, irons in the fire. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go look at your trophy truck.
Yeah. I've seen it live and I've also watched a lot of like in car of it. Uh, and it's fast. It's yeah, yeah. it's nasty. Yeah, you know? it's, it's still it's it's like 5,600 pounds. Yeah, you know, it's, so it is on the lighter side. So talk about this thing. When did when was this constructed? When did you well, get commissioned for this thing? We started this like in 2010. Okay. In fact, I wasn't working with Phil Dosola back then. We were doing this at my at my shop. Yeah. We sent a couple of guys, and we were built the roller basically at my shop. Yeah. And then. Then it came over here, and then Javi was the project manager, actually, because he he kept it on vision. He kept it, everyone on the same page, yeah. continued making everything light. And it was also hand-built, too. It didn't have a water jet or laser. Sure. So all the bracketry for the you know the calipers and brake wheel cylinder mounts mm -hmm. and all the stuff, band saw it out. Sure, and, yeah. And dimple died, try to make lighter. Yeah, I mean, and a lot of radius rolls going on. Yeah, you know, we did that in the... I like that, though. <laughs> it's That's what makes it kind of have its shape, you know? It's yeah. pretty. We might do things a little bit differently now, but yeah. when we did that, that's what we did. Yeah. And again, it's, it's relatively easy to work on. It's, you can get the shocks on and off pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. You can, you know, a few panels, you can get to the front. Sure. Yeah, that thing's got a lot of time on it, too. Yeah. What does something like this usually take you to build? Like what timeline yeah, you know, for a chassis? They back back then. I think we spent over. I, I think we spent a year. Do we weren't on it all the time, but yeah. a year building the chassis. And yeah. then they came finished it up over here pretty quick. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I think we made the five hundred. They took delivery of it like on this, in December. And mm -hmm. I think they made the five hundred. Wow. Yeah. Teamwork and makes the, the dream work. Is when it the, the, looks a good race. Sure. Sure. Well, I think that's you know what what are your um, what are your plans your future plans what do you what does your day consist of nowadays? Um, now I just help wherever I can here. Yeah. You know, um, put put the fires out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, have you ever had any stuff of your own like any pre-runners of your own or any no, big shit? I do other things. I don't. Yeah. I yeah. Work yeah. On this stuff enough. Yeah. I like my three wheeler, like going. Yeah. Cruising around yeah. those kind of things. Little like lighter. Scoring. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, other than that, no, this is, I get my off-road fill doing this. Sure, sure. I felt that same way too. You know, like I, people are like, you don't have some blah, blah. And I have some stuff that sits, but I don't like really work on it. And I, do, I get more pleasure out of the build than maybe even going and using it. You know, like I just like to construct stuff. Yeah, no, I, um, I enjoy the engineering part in the build. I enjoy the for sure. suspensions. Short course is enough different because I enjoy the you know, making the car perform. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In short course, we have to qualify, and then, you know, you have to different setups, yeah, all those kind yeah, of yeah. things. So I, I enjoy that the dynamics of like race day mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. when you're making changes. Sure, sure. Awesome. Well, I think that's it. I just wanted to do. A, I'm, I'm grateful for your time. I and do you, hey, you did awesome. You did great. It's all in your head. You got to get out of there. My mom used to say it's like a bad neighborhood. You should never be there by yourself. <laughs> and I'm like, I go there every day. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. No, I appreciate it, Dave. Like I just, you know, for, and I've obviously, I'm old as shit myself too, but I did, you know, stuff that you've done is special. Um, and it, you know, you have an eye for things that's special. And I enjoy, I enjoy, I enjoy. I it shows. I work with a good guy. So yeah. he passed away a few years ago, but yeah. it's great. Yeah. So. Um, thank you for your time, you know, thank you guys like comment subscribe. Bye That's it. Good job